Hello everyone, and welcome to the Prot Warrior Survival Guide for Tomb of Sargeras. And let's just get right into it. For Goroth, what you really have to do is try to keep shield block up as much as possible when you're actively tanking Goroth. And as soon as you get the tanking debuff, it deals fire damage. So go ahead and toss up Spell Reflect while you're running away from everyone else with that tanking debuff. Since Goroth doesn't have any big damaging abilities, that's really it. Keep a steady tanking rotation when you're actively tanking. Use Spell Reflect on the debuff. Demonic Inquisition. Now what you want to do when tanking Atrigan, since Belak can't be tanked, is to keep shield block up as much as possible, but make sure that you have one charge saved up for the Fell Scythe ability. So right before Fell Scythe goes off and actually hits you, you either want to use a charge of shield block and a demoralizing shout, or use your Neltharian's Fury to guarantee a crit block on the Scythe. One other thing to note is that when Atrican is at 97 or 98 energy right about to cast Bone Saw, I highly recommend Heroic Leaping Away so that not even one tick of Bone Saw actually hits you. So leap away at 97 or 98 energy, and remember, Neltharian's Fury guarantees a crit block, even if it gets interrupted by the hit. For Harjitan, keep shield block up as much as you can when you're actively tanking, and when you're not actively tanking, in order to help mitigate as much damage from the debuffs that you can, try to generate as much rage as you can. And when you pick up the adds, the wave menders that can actually be picked up, use your AoE stun to minimize the amount of damage and debuffs that they give out. Now right after Harjitan does the draw in, he does get the frost debuff, which makes all of his melees do frost damage raid wide. So immediately after his draw in, that's when you should use spell reflection and mitigate that frost damage that he's handing out. One last thing to know is that if your HP is low, maybe 60% or something below and he's about to cast Unchecked Rage, use a Demoralizing Shout to reduce the damage of that. Up next is Mistress Sazim. Now when you are actively tanking Mistress, it's going to be mostly physical damage, so go ahead and just use Shield Block when you're tanking her. If you have the debuff and you're actually picking up the Eels or the Abyssal Spawns, those do 100% shadow damage, but it is blockable, so try to keep Shield Block up as much as you can. But if you can't and you're taking too much damage, use Spell Reflect in order to mitigate that shadow damage coming in. One big thing to note here is that when Mistress is casting Burden of Pain, you can actually taunt halfway through the cast and it'll still go on its original intended target. So there's no need to let the tank that has the Burden of Pain debuff even get one hit off on them. So always taunt swap while Burden of Pain is being cast. Sisters of the Moon, you should go ahead and clear your tanking debuff as fast as possible. And as a tank, since you might be taking a variety of damage from very different things, I like to clear my stacks below 10. So anytime I'm at 10 stacks, I'm too high. I normally clear at around 5 stacks. Now right before the bubble debuff goes off, and in normal mode this is phase 2, and in heroic mode it's phase 1 and 2, I like to save up almost a full rage bar right before this bubble debuff goes off, because a full rage bar combined with the legendary bracers means that you can practically heal the bubble debuff yourself by just spamming ignore pain on a full rage bar. I do suggest saving your cooldowns for phase 3 since you're going to be taking a ton of magic damage in phase 3. And the best thing to do when in phase 3 is treat the tanking debuffs like Krosis debuffs. So as soon as the other tank taunts off of you, hopefully you only have 2 stacks, use spell reflect at that moment to mitigate that magic damage because the tanking debuff in phase 3 does a lot of ticking arcane damage to you over time. So save your debuffs for phase 3. If you get more than 2 of the stacking debuffs in phase 3, you might want to stagger a few cooldowns like shield wall and spell reflect and just keep drawing those out so that you take the least amount of damage as possible. For the desolate host. When you're in the spirit realm, try to interrupt the priestess as often as you can as long as you're not using that shattering scream to get rid of a bone armor buff and use spell reflect to help your healers catch up with healing. So if you're ever below 50% HP, go ahead and throw spell reflect up to mitigate all of that magic damage that happens in the spirit world and hopefully that will have enough impact to let your healer catch up. When you're in the corporal world, the large majority of things that happen here can be mitigated by shield block. So try to maintain shield block uptime as much as possible. If there are a lot of adds on you, if you're doing heroic mode and ignoring the adds, that's when you can use Neltharian's Fury to guarantee crit blocks and to have periods where you take less damage because of the guaranteed crit blocks. And for both the spirit and the corporal world, when the desolate host comes up and you have to run into the suffering cast, use spell reflection while in there because the damage that you do split up is magic. 
Maiden of Vigilance. Now, if you're running low on people when the hammer is about to go out, you do need to mitigate that damage a little bit more. So if a lot of people on your side got the bomb debuff and jumped off, use a demoralizing shout before that hammer drops. There is a portion of the hammer that does do blockable damage. So if you have Neltharian's Fury up, you can go ahead and cast it right before that hammer hits you. And remember to also use Spell Reflect to mitigate that hammer whenever possible. Fallen Avatar. You have to make sure that your shield block is up when desolate stack is going to be applied to you so keep track of your dbm or big wigs timer and right before that goes out to you go ahead and use a charge of shield block or else it'll hurt a ton use your spell reflect whenever ruptured realities is being cast that is the large majority of any magic damage you're going to be taking and in phase two you can save spell reflect for when you're positioning fallen avatar and you actually jump into the lava for a second you can mitigate that damage by using spell reflect the large majority of the damage in this fight does come from melee damage that fallen avatar does so when you're actively tanking Fallen Avatar, use Neltharian's Fury whenever off cooldown to lower the damage that you're taking in. Kill Jaden. Now this fight does have a lot of special things that you should be doing in order to survive it. The first big thing is to just try to maintain a very good shield block uptime. If you have the new legendary pants, it might be good use for this fight because shield block does so much in this fight. So in order to survive fell claws, this is exactly what I do. On one set of fell claws, what I do is I use demoralizing shout right before the first one lands on me, and then I maintain a 100% shield block uptime throughout the duration of the five fell claws hitting me. Something else that I do is while fell claws one through three are being handed out, I just do my normal rotation, generate rage, vengeance weave keep shield block up but as soon as I get into fell claws 4 and 5 I just start spamming shield slam and ignore pain to make sure that all of my global cooldowns are going only for survivability there isn't enough time between those two fell claws to vengeance weave successfully so just use all of that rage you're getting into shield slam and ignore pain spamming on the second set of fell claws when my demoralizing shout is going to be down i make sure that my shield block is up for fell claws one through three i maintain a normal rage generation through fell claws one through three and right before fell claw number four lands i cast neltharian's fury which guarantees a crit block on fell claws number four and number five so that's going to mitigate a ton of damage from those last two fell claws and while you're casting neltharian's fury you can also spam ignore pain so do that during the air transition phases make sure you're spamming thunderclap as much as possible to keep generating rage during that period and if you do not have the fell claw debuff you can mitigate the big armageddon very effectively and the way you do this is you run into the big armageddon face kill jaden while standing in the armageddon throw up one charge of shield block to try to block that armageddon because that big armageddon is completely blockable and throw up one full ignore pain so one charge of shield block and 160 rage ignore pain is more than enough to mitigate a lot of that big armageddon damage so that you can save the rest of the raids immunities for all of the rest of the armageddons during the illidan phase while i'm looking for illidan what i like to do is spam thunderclap and ignore pain to stay alive and to generate rage and once i find illidan then i go into a normal tanking rotation on the adds something else to note is that the illidan debuff does do shadow damage to you so if you want to lower the amount of damage that you're taking during this phase use a spell reflect and in the final phase you have one completely unmitigated cast of darkness of a thousand souls which happens as soon as phase three starts during this cast you want to use your spell reflect so that it's active as soon as the cast goes off to mitigate a lot of that damage and that really does it for the protection warrior survival guide this is for normal and heroic modes of all of these fights and if you like what i do want to help support the channel go ahead and visit my patreon and twitch down below and as always good luck tanking out there